Hey, hey everyone, it's Colin from GIY Guy for another episode. Today we're talking soil pH. Now, before you get all scared about high school chemistry and all that, this is not going to be that in depth. It's a really casual episode. Before I get into it though, I want to apologize in advance. There's a rooster across the yard, uh, my neighbor behind me, and it's been going all day. And then my neighbor to my left also has seven dogs, and they just randomly go nuts. So hopefully they don't bother us today. Well, let's get into it. So this video is about soil pH. And first, I'm just gonna give you a really short refresher course on what pH is, and then we're gonna dive into um, some data I found. It's a table, or a, it's a range plot that I made that actually shows the pH range that different garden veggies like. It's actually really convenient when you're starting a garden. And then, we're gonna get into a really quick science experiment you can do at home, another one of my Bill Nye moments, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's just gonna be a way that you can approximate your soil pH. And like, this is really approximate. This is like making sure it's not acid or like bleach, <laughs> basically. Uh, so it's not gonna be like, oh, I have a 6.3 pH. It's gonna be like, no, you probably have like a somewhere between six and eight. Um, but really the goal is to just make sure you're not trying to plant in something that's uninhabitable, basically. And then finally, we're gonna wrap it up. If you find that your garden soil is borderline uninhabitable, then I'm gonna show you, or I'm gonna talk about a few ways that you can adjust your soil pH. So let's get into it. So what is soil pH? If you remember back to your chemistry class, you probably saw this chart of pH range. So it just measures how alkaline or acidic your soil is. There's nothing fancy about it, and we're not gonna dive any farther than that. And then it's also measured on a scale from zero to 14, where zero is acid, it's like battery acid is zero, and then 14 is like bleach, it's like really basic. And most garden plants actually like a range between six and seven, and lucky for us, rainwater actually has a pH of five to six, and so most gardens actually have a pH in that six to seven range, thank goodness. And hopefully you're not an unlucky one who has a trash pH, but if you do, we're gonna hear, we're here to help you fix it. Now, I have this fancy chart that I made, and you can see on the left, there's all these common garden veggies that you might grow. And then also, I've plotted their pHs, their pH ranges. And I put a nice little convenient line for you right in the middle at neutral seven, and you can see that most plants actually like a slightly acidic pH. And so I'm not gonna dive into all these. Uh, I wanna note that there are some things like sweet potatoes or potatoes that are kind of the lower end of that range. Sweet potatoes actually are really picky. They like five and a half to six. And pH isn't like a make or break sort of thing. If you have um, rough ballpark pH, your plants are gonna be fine. It's not like, oh, 6.2 and they're gonna die, 6.5 and they're good to go. No, it's, it's pretty uh, ambiguous. Um, and, and plants are pretty hardy in general. And so, then there's other things like tomatoes, like I was mentioning, they have a really wide range. Theirs is like five and a half to seven and a half, so, I mean, it's no wonder people like to grow them. They're, they can grow in any, almost anything. So, after that little refresher, let's go ahead and get into, oh wait, one more thing. Actually, I posted that data online, so I put the link in the description below. If you wanna bookmark that and save it for later, it might come in handy as you as you get ready for spring. Again, the reason I'm doing these winter videos is because it's so much easier to prep your garden now while nothing is growing than it is to try to go back later after you have plants in the ground and say, oh, I need to adjust my pH. Well, let's do that now so we don't have to do it later. But anyway, what I have in front of me are is my Bill Nye, the science guy experiment, or Bill Nye the GIY guy, or Colin, Colin the GIY guy experiment. and. So I have two containers of garden soil. And I'll actually zoom in when I start pouring everything in, um, but I'll, I'll get to that. So I have two containers of garden soil. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do an alkalinity test, which measures how, uh, how much of a basic white girl your soil is. <laughs> no, not really. It measure, but it does measure how basic your soil is. And then we're gonna do an acidity test that measures how acidic your soil is. So for the alkalinity test, I have a half cup of, well, first I'm gonna put in a half cup of water into each one, make kind of a muddy solution. Uh, that way we can see any fizzing that happens. Um, but in this, for the alkalinity test, I'm going to pour one half cup of, uh, it's just 
basic distilled white vinegar and you can see I'm a big spender I went, I went with the great value brand on both of these and you can too it's just a super cheap experiment probably cost you two bucks for both of these but when I pour this um, vinegar in vinegar is actually an acetic it is acetic acid and so if my soil is basic this acid is going to react with it and kind of have that acid base reaction uh, if you remember there's that science experiment with the volcano where you mix the baking soda and vinegar that's essentially what could happen like on a very small scale in here so if my soil is basic and I pour an acid into it I'll start to see some fizzing and it's because the acid base reaction releases carbon dioxide that's what causes the fizzing now on the other hand if my soil is acidic uh, which will be the test for this one and I add a base which is just baking soda then it's also going to have that acid base reaction and you'll see some fizzing as well now in the case of this experiment no news is good news we don't want to see a lot of fizzing either way because that means we have really basic or really acidic soil we do not want that so we're actually hoping for not a lot of fizzing at all so fingers crossed this should be a boring experiment but it is one you can try at home just to make sure your pH is roughly good. So I'm going to go ahead and add the water. Just add a little bit in there. Probably just enough to, um, so we can see the bubbles when, uh, when I add the vinegar and baking soda. And I did raid the kitchen today, so I have my measuring cups, my Pyrex, and my little spatula. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up mix up the dirt <clears throat> and so I have the dirt mixed up and I'm going to zoom in for you alright so hopefully you can see that a little bit better now for the alkalinity test we're going to see if our soil is basic or not and I'm going to go ahead and take this half cup of vinegar I'm just going to pour the whole thing in make sure we got plenty of acid uh, to react with our basic soil if it's basic so I don't see a lot happening. There's that, there's some little pockets of just a tiny bit of fizz, but overall I think most of the bubbles were caused by me dumping it all in at once. So maybe going slow is better. Uh, also, it looks like there's an air pocket here. That's what that fizz is. But generally, it's pretty flat. <clears throat> now let's move over here to the al uh, the acidity test. Excuse me. And we're just gonna go ahead and dump in. Um, as much as we can I don't want to I don't want to fill it up and not be able to see the bubbles so we've got we've got room for more we'll put the whole thing in there <clears throat> so in this one again we're not seeing a lot of reaction uh, we it's pretty flat and there's <laughs> actually a worm in here moving around it kind of threw me off <clears throat> but this is actually really good news. We don't want a lot of reaction. So let's say that we were gonna have a bad reaction. Well, this is what a bad reaction would look like. We'll take some of that base and we'll put it in there. This is what we do not want to see. <laughs> if you see that, your soil is probably killing anything and everything. <laughs> so there we go. We just ran the basic experiment you can do at home. Since we didn't see hardly any reaction at all, that's a good thing we can we can roughly say that our pH is probably within that six and a half to seven and a half range so about where it should be I actually bought a couple pH test kits just to get a more refined pH so right now I can't say even if we're leaning more six or eight like all I can say is it's somewhere between six and eight probably but with these test kits then we'll be able to get like a you know 6.2 or 7.3 a little more accurate but this is good news for us. Like I said, if you see a big reaction, that's not what you want. So let's talk what you can do if you see a big reaction. And this is where we get into adjusting your soil. Now adjusting your soil is not something that you can just dump a bag of something on and fix the problem overnight. It actually takes months at a time and you have to work the amender into your soil, give it time to absorb into the dirt, and also keep testing it probably once a month. Now. Uh, I would recommend buying the tester that sticks in the ground that way you don't have to keep buying the little pills or pieces of paper or whatever uh, you can just use it over and over <clears throat> but if you need to amend your soil uh, do it in the fall do it in the off season like right now where it's not going to run the risk of harming your plant roots or anything uh, so now is a great time to do it uh, 
So finally, if you do need to raise or lower your pH, uh, to raise your pH, you'll want to add lime, which is a base. And you can also do, uh, you can also add wood ash, just burned wood. Just make sure that it's not chemically treated, otherwise you'll get those chemicals in your garden. And then uh, if you need to lower your pH, then you can uh, add sulfur, which is more acidic. And another way, if you're just doing DIY stuff, you can add pine needles, they're, they're a little bit acidic. And you can also add coffee grounds. I compost with coffee grounds, so my compost is probably a little bit acidic. Uh, it's great for if you're going, growing blueberries or sweet potatoes. Now, one pro tip before I wrap up is if you are needing to amend your garden soil, then maybe you don't need the whole garden to be a pH of six or five. Maybe you just need to grow sweet potatoes in one section. So instead of doing your whole garden, save yourself time and money and just amend the spot where you're gonna grow sweet potatoes. Well, that's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe, notification bell, everything that all the YouTubers say. Uh, but hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, I would recommend running this experiment before you buy a pH test kit. You know, if you don't see a reaction, maybe you don't even need to spend money on a test kit. pH isn't like absolutely critical to growing a garden. So with that, I hope you guys have a good day. Um, recommend doing this at home so you can be ready in the springtime to grow it yourself.